Hi everybody. Here I come with the next session of uh, sound. We had an introductory session, session one, where we had discussed about the basic characteristics of sound. And in the end of the session, we were discussing about the frequency and amplitude and period, the three important aspects of uh, of a sound wave. Um, today, we are going to in this session, we are going to discuss about what do you mean by an audible sound, how the sound is getting propagated right and and so on and and um, uh, also what what do you mean by ultrasonic sound what is and how those ultrasonic sound is being used in in various uh, scenarios and so on so we'll discuss all this but before getting to that i want to just tell you this this present this uh, video is coming from navayuk channel navayuk study channel uh, if you want to reach us navayuk.study at gmail.com is our email id and uh, the website is navayukstudy.wordpress.com. You can actually go there and you can see all these videos and, and ways to send us questions. And also you can risk request for uh, video conferencing sessions if you want to have face-to-face -face classes with us and so on. All right. Okay. Now, uh, coming back to audible sound. Now, before that, I want to just tell you how does the sound waves look like, right? Now, uh, the sound waves are what you call longitudinal waves. Longitudinal. No. So, uh, so the question is: Is this the other name of sound wave? No. Longitudinal waves is a type of waves. There are two different yeah. types. Yeah. No. 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 Sound wave is one of uh, sound wave is one type of wave which is a longitudinal wave. So, long there are two different classifications of waves. Okay, so let me just explain that first. Okay, uh, so. Oops, oops. So you have two different classification of waves. One is called the longitudinal waves, and the other is the transverse waves, right? So now let us have a look at uh, what does what does this mean, right? So these are the two classifications of waves: longitudinal waves and transverse waves. See, look at how the wave motion is happening here, right? No, no. So that, so that is what. So look at this. Look at this. This is this is longitudinal waves, right? So, ah, so transverse we'll discuss later. Look at longitudinal waves. So what is really happening? You have a surface moving. We can see small lines here. Ah, no. What is that lines? In fact, that is a wave. What is happening is, look at the. So these are the particles. These dots that you're seeing is the particles in the medium. Which could be air molecules, right? For example. Yeah. So these are all the particles, right? And how are the particles moving? Particles are moving this way. Take one example. This red dot, right? Red dot is. Is it moving from that position? No. It is there, right? Look at this red dot. Look at this red dot. Is it moving from that position? No. It is there itself. It is there itself. It is moving about this moon mean position. It is oscillating, right? It is oscillating, and that yeah, and that is happening to all these particles. All these particles are moving. So, which means the the particles in the medium when a longitudinal wave is propagating, the particles in the medium is oscillating in the direction of the motion of the wave. What is the direction of motion of the wave here? This, right? This is the direction of motion of the wave. Yes, direction of motion of the wave is this. So the particles, particles in what is happening today? Something is wrong. I'm writing properly. Very slow. Okay. So you look at this particle. So what is happening? The particles. are moving are vibrating i don't i don't think i should write it here so 
So in longitudinal waves, waves, particles are moving along, not moving actually, vibrating, that's a better word, or oscillating along direction of the wave, direction of the wave. right along the direction of the wave that is what is happening in longitudinal waves right so look at here so the particles are this particle is oscillating this way that way and right which means it is an along the direction of the movement of the wave whereas look at the transverse wave in transverse wave yeah if you look at the any particle look at this particle it is not it is it is oscillating this way right yeah it is uh, yeah we'll get into that so it is why is oscillating this way which means the oscillation direction of os oscillation is like that whereas the waves direction is this way wave is moving that way which means the direction of oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of movement of the wave right the wave is moving this way wave is moving this way Ah, but the particles are moving this way. So the so in longitudinal wave, the oscillation, the direction of oscillation of the particles in the medium is in the direction of the movement of the wave. Whereas in transverse waves, the direction of motion of the particles is perpendicular to the direction of movement of the wave. Right. So that is one very key aspect which I want to understand. Did you understand? Now, if you look at sound, sound is actually a longitudinal wave. Yes, there's oscillation. Only thing is the direction of the oscillation of the particle in, in the case of longitudinal waves is along the direction of the wave, whereas uh, in the case of uh, uh, transverse waves is perpendicular to the direction of wave. Right? So this, so sound waves are sound waves are longitudinal waves, whereas water waves, as you rightly told, water waves right let me just close this i think this is what is causing the wrong performance issue because i think they are not using gpu rendering that's why it's so bad okay now let us see what happens so if you look at longitudinal waves the example is sound wave Sound wave is a longitudinal wave, right? And what did you see here? So you have, for example, a vibrating surface and this is air, right? So this vibrating surface moves this way. What happens? It pushes the air, right? When it moves this way, what happens? It pushes the air. When it pushes the air, what happens? The pressure, the air in the nearby area gets a little bit compressed. When the surface, so this, so if you look at, uh, the longitudinal waves let us let say some, this is vibrating right this is vibrating vibration is what causes sound waves right this we discussed that last time so vibration is what causes sound waves so now when it is vibrating when this surface moved this way what would have what has it done it has pushed the air nearby isn't it it has pushed the air nearby and because of that, that nearby air got little bit compressed. That means its pressure slightly increases. The pressure of the nearby air slightly increases. So now what has happened? It has created some little bit high pressure area. High pressure, uh, a little air has got high pressure now. Then what is happening? It is moving this way. Right? See, it is, it is oscillating, right? So, the surface moved this way, pushed a little bit air, 
then the surface is moving back then what will happen surface is moving this here what happens now we will get some part of air where slight low pressure area is created right so what is happening alternate high pressure area low pressure area high pressure area low pressure area so what is happening now see this let us go back and look at that uh, let us go back and look at that uh, particular uh, it is a type of oscillation only i let me just show you that uh, thing once again so here look at this see first what happens is when the surface moves this way when the surface moves this way see it moves this way what is happening it is creating a little bit high pressure area see this what you are seeing this right this one you can see some dense area and there is a uh, less dense area alternating don't you see that a dense area, less dense area. Lens area, less dense area. And that dense area has got a little more slightly higher pressure than less dense area. Ah, yeah. Why is that happening? Is because of the movement of the surface. As when this move, when the surface is moving this way, it is pushing there. When the surface is moving that way, it is um, it it, uh, it is basically sucking there. So, somewhat like sucking there, right? So when the sucking happens, pressure reduces. When it's pushing happens, pressure increases. And it is alternating between that. And so the longitudinal wave is composed of alternate high pressure, low pressure. High pressure, low pressure areas in the medium. And that is moving forward. What is happening? See, it moves for it creates a high pressure area then it goes to low pressure area then again it moves again so again another high pressure area and that is what is happening and that is getting transmitted so this is how that vibration so what is really happening the sound wave is a transmission of the vibration of that source it uh, that vibration of the source is being transmitted through the medium and what is the frequency of that transmission it is equal to the frequency of the vibration so that is basically what it is whereas the transverse waves is the very good example is how the water waves are formed on the surface of a pond that is transverse waves right if you have you seen that or uh, or a sea wave or a wave on a river surface that is transverse wave whereas a sound wave is longitudinal wave did you understand the basic basic difference is it very clear no. okay all right so let me just uh, close this uh, so that is about longitudinal waves and transverse waves right so i hope it's very clear to you how what is the difference between uh, the longitudinal waves and transverse waves right now um, the reason is because that is a basic concept of how the sound is getting propagated right and what kind of wave does it have what is the nature of that wave you say sound wave sound wave we are, con we are always saying the sound wave but what's the nature of the sound wave that is a longitudinal wave where the particles in the medium oscillate or vibrate in the direction of the movement of the sound wave right so that is basically what it is I hope that's clear right okay now Correct. So sound waves, so the students are saying sound waves are longitudinal waves. Correct. Sound wave is one of the examples of longitudinal waves. Right? The nature of the sound wave. Huh? The nature is longitudinal. Yeah. The nature of that sound wave is longitudinal. Correct. Whereas uh, the nature of the water waves on a pond is transverse. Okay. Good. Now, let us look at what is an audible sound. Is it that all sound is audible? No. no. Right? your the human ear is is uh, is having a range of frequencies which is audible 
right there's a range of frequencies which is audible to the human ear i actually want to uh, show you the 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 audible range now this is basically the audible range of different animals right of different animals now look at humans so for humans from around 20 hertz all the way to around uh, 20000 hertz right that is the yeah that is a sonic vibration correct right which is audible to human ear but look at the owl its range is far more lower right uh, it is around 100 hertz to 10000 hertz that's it right so uh, whereas you look at uh, a dog look at a dog right so if you look at a dog dog actually has got up to 40000 hertz here whereas it's it's it starts around 50 hertz but it goes all the way to around uh, 30000 30000 hertz for dog right um, look at look at bat bat's frequency is way different right it is starting at around uh, maybe uh, 2000 hertz right all the way to almost 80000 hertz right so yeah so it it, it I can you can hear ultrasonic far above the frequency is far above what we can hear that's what bat can hear you can see the beluga whale same you know what bats uh, the whales i'll actually talk to you about uh, that later on but whales use ultrasonic waves to communicate below the sea right now i'll tell you why also the reasons also i'll give you later so you can see that it is not that all hum uh, all animals in this uh, planet has got the same um, same uh, same uh, uh, frequency range which is audible to them what is audible to me may not be audible to the dog what is audible to the dog may not be audible to me right same thing with the cat you can see the cat's the cat frequency far if you look at the upper levels when it is 20000 is cut off for us see it, it it goes far above for a cat right so the audible frequencies of uh, uh, and, and why is the difference because the design of the ear is different right the design of human ear versus the design of a cat ear versus the design of a bat ear are all different Yeah. So that is frequency. Y axis is the frequency, the right? Axis. And X axis is the name, the name of the animal. And it's going showing the what you call the frequency band. So this is what is called the frequency band. Audible audible frequency. Are there any animal which can hear ultrasonic band? There could be, there could be. Uh, we have to find it. Here, I, I don't have any animals like that, right? We don't have any animals which, is, which can hear frequencies less than 20 hertz. Infrasonic is uh, vibrations less than 20 hertz. That's infrasonic, right? Because, ah, so all, yeah, correct. Ultrasonic is above our range and infrasonic is below our range. So, any vibrations be below 20 hertz is infrasonic. So audible frequency band for various, this is not bond band, B A N B A N D. okay? So this is what basically what I wanted to show you. Is it clear? Clear? Okay. So uh, let's go back. So you can see humans cannot hear, humans cannot hear sound slash vibrations, sounds or vibrations below 20 hertz. So below 20 hertz is infrasonic and we cannot hear that. Our ears are not built to hear sound waves or vibrations which are of a frequency below 20 hertz. Frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz which is 20,000. Kilo is a thousand, right? So 20,000 or 20 kilohertz is audible which is called the sonic vibrations and frequencies above 20 kilohertz is not audible to human ear which is called ultrasonic ultrasonic vibrations or uh, ultrasonic sound right so please keep in mind 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz is what is audible to us anything below 20 Hertz is infrasonic which is not audible to us anything above 20 kill 20 uh, 20,000 uh, 20, kilohertz 
Oh, I mean, anything below 20 hertz is not audible to us, which is infrasonic. Anything above 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz is uh, also something which is not audible to us, right? Which is called ultrasonic. The ranges which is sonic is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. All right. Okay, fine. So now, let us look at ultrasonic vibrations and how the nature uses it. Right? If you look at nature, why is that some animals are able to hear certain frequencies which others are not able to hear? Right? So if you look at dogs, dogs can hear up to 40 kilohertz. Yeah, which is correct. So double that of the highest frequencies we can hear, which is 20 kilohertz. Right? So uh, when the dogs are trained, right, to... Yeah, so why why they are trained? Why why do why do they need to be trained for Galton whistle? Okay, that is fine. Why should they be trained for that? The reason is probably dogs are trying to find some thieves. If I use a whistle which is in sonic uh, range, the person who uh, 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 per, the the person who is being chased by the dog also will hear that whistle. Right? We don't want him to hear. We only want a dog to hear. If I use a Galton whistle, the human who is being chased by the dog won't be able to hear the sound. Only the dog can hear. So I can give signals to the dog without informing or without in any way making the other person understand that I am giving signals to the dog. Because this is a frequency which only dog knows. The humans don't. So that is the advantage of a Galton whistle. So the Galton whistle produces frequencies about 20 kilohertz, which is ultrasonic. And so the humans cannot hear it. So I can signal, give signals to the dogs. I can train the dogs to give signals to them using the Galton whistle, which can be heard, which cannot be heard by humans. Right? So that is basically what the Galton whistle can do, where, where it produces, uh, uh, you know, ultrasonic vibrations. The other example which I want to give you is about bats, right? Now, bats use what are called ultrasonic navigation, and also ultrasonic wave, uh, and they also use ultrasonic waves uh, for echolocation of prey. Now, why is it doing that? You see, the bats their eyesight is not that great right and in fact it, they always they they live in the night time when there is no sun outside so they cannot use the sunlight to locate anything because it's dark everywhere so now look at the beauty of nature right now the animal has figured out some other way of locating things in front of it and locating its prey Right? And that is what is called echolocation. Now let us see how the echolocation works. Yeah, that's what. So let us see how the echolocation works. Okay? So that's what uh, I will show you. So look at how the echolocation works. Okay? So you can see what, what happens now. So what is the bat doing here? Sending yes, so the bat is, so there is a prey here. So this is a prey. This is a prey, right? And the bat is sending a ultrasonic. So it is sending a ultrasonic wave. So what the ultrasonic wave does, it goes and hits the prey, the prey cannot hear it either, right? So it goes and hits the prey and, it's, and a portion of that reflects back. A portion of that is reflecting back, right? See? And the, and the bat can hear it. Now, what the bat is now doing is, it has got mechanisms in its brain where it checks how much time did it take, right? So yeah, how much time did it take for the wave to go and come back? 
bat is not sitting and calculating the brain has got that that circuit already done right so it, it sends a wave it waits for the response and the amount of that few microseconds it, it, because it may not have taken even a second right it, it may be that fast and from that it figures out what is the it estimates the distance of the prey and you should understand this prey could be moving right this prey could be moving also so the prey would have reached here so next time you know it for example the prey may be moving away or moving far nearer right so if it is moving away how will the bat know next time when the wave goes it takes a little more longer time more more distant it is correct so using all this it can actually figure out what is the location of that prey and this is what is called echolocation ah why because there is no sunlight it's night it just can't use the sunlight to figure it out for us we have sunlight you can look at and figure out but the bat doesn't have sunlight so now what will it do so the eyes the big eyes the bats have many cases is not of much use so now will the bat be located so this is the way it does echolocation now this time it can be located correct right now yes it is not only that even for navigating itself for example it is flying through a forest with full of trees it should know there is a tree in front of it by again using it. so it's continuously sending these waves figuring out what is there in front and if there are trees it actually can you know navigate itself between the trees and go also using the same echolocation okay clear okay so bats have weak eyesight naturally and uh, without sunlight it cannot see anyway right so so it uses the echolocation what is the echo i have as as i have seen you know echo is nothing but you send way, a sound wave and it reflects back that and reflection of that sound wave is the echo right when they fly at night they produce ultrasonic vibrations which cannot be heard by humans and its prey right because if it can be heard by the prey then prey will run away but it cannot hear because ultrasonic right and when these vibrations strike its prey they are reflected back and on receiving the reflected bat a uh, sound bat locates a prey right so it is got uh, it it is got uh, just like how, how are we sending sonic vibration we have got a vocal cord similarly it also has got a vocal device using which is able to produce that ultrasonic wave right so uh, now dolphins and I, i i i all of us love dolphins aren't we i love it it's a beautiful uh, wonderful nice animal. animal right very friendly to humans right now again the dolphins use echolocation to locate its prey right uh, because so even even in uh, the dolphins usually dive deep down into the sea and uh, allow me allow me to finish allow me to finish the explanation so, uh if frequency range of dolphins should be also in the ultrasonic will have ultrasonic part also because it's using ultrasonic waves for it it may not be same as bat it may not be i am not uh, we need to check that okay so uh why don't you take it as an exercise to figure from the net what is the uh, audible spectrum or audible frequency band for dolphins right take it as a project and figure it out from uh, the net okay now the ultrasonic vibration right again the dolphins uh, why should dolphins use ultra, uh, echolocation the reason is because dolphins dive, dive deep into the sea and down below the sunlight doesn't reach right the sunlight doesn't reach down because the problem is the sea is not pure water it has got so much of particles right it has got so much of particles and what will happen this particles will scatter the light and because of scattering as you go deeper and deeper into the sea you can find it will become darker and darker so when it goes deep down in the and dives into the deep sea what happens is that there's hardly any sunlight to locate the prey and dolphins usually eats other fishes it cannot locate so it has to use echolocation to locate the prey again another example similar to the bats right which can be used which is used by dolphins to do 
to locate a prey. And I'm, I'm, re I'm giving you a reason. Dolphins, in fact, does have good eyesight. So it's not that they have bad eyesight, right? Because, and they use that when they come up. When they come up on the surface, there's enough sunlight and they can see things. But when they go deep down the sea for fish, for eating their, uh, to locate their prey and, uh, uh, you know, eat their prey, at that point they use echolocation. And the reason is because the sunlight doesn't reach the deeper parts of the sea or ocean. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. So, these are some of the ways the ultrasonic waves are used by uh, uh, nature or, or the different features in the nature. Another example is, is whales, right? The different types of whales, the humpback, hunchback whales and, uh, you know, the, uh, and the different types of whales under the ocean, the whales use ultrasonic waves. For what? For communication. The reason is because there is no other way. The, the whales, ocean is so huge and the, the whales may be pretty far away from each other. There is no way they can communicate. Right? Now, so there they actually use the ultrasonic waves and using the ultrasonic waves they can communicate. Right? So, uh, in fact, uh, some of the scientists have in, 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 uh, come out with uh, some kind of coding the whales use. They have some kind of a language, right? Not as complicated as English and all that, but uh, simple. We really don't know, right? We are still learning, right? So I, I, I myself personally remember seeing a, um, a small documentary in National Geographic about whales and their communication. And they do use certain, uh, certain uh, sounds uh, for communicating between uh, them. Uh, probably uh, to kind of uh, give a friendly signal or for, for or maybe the child trying to uh, inform the mother where where the child is or all these kind of things you know simple simple communication they can do and they use ultrasonic waves for doing that brilliant look at what all is happening around you gentlemen and ladies the students do you know the wonderful things which is happening in nature all right now let us look at how we humans are using ultrasonic waves, right? In industry, the ultrasonic waves are used, or vibrations are used in various different things. One thing is for homogenizing, uh, homoge homogenization of milk. The milk that you get is what you call homogenized milk. The milk what you get from the cow is not homogenized. The reason is the milk has got fat particles in it, particle of fat. And that is initially not uniformly distributed in the milk. By homogenizing, what happens is that those fat particles the, or flat globules are uniformly distributed within the milk. And for homogenization, we use ultrasonic vibrations. I'll just give you a, uh, I'll just show you uh, how the homogenizer works, right? So here actually, in fact, what they're doing is they're, they're putting something into the water and they're kind of showing how the homogenizer is spreading that throughout the water uniformly, right? So, and you can see this particular thing that is so sending sound, ultrasonic sound waves into this water, right? So now let us see what happens. So they have put something, right? It is not equally distributed and see after some time what is happening. It is completely spread and equally distributed into the water. Right? Now, how is it happening is because these ultrasonic waves are going and hitting on these particles, splitting them into smaller and smaller particles and spreading. We cannot hear it. Ultrasonic. No, there's that, that I am muted. The machine may be producing some sound, but that is not the exact sound which, yeah, which is doing the homogenization because that sound we cannot hear, right? So you can see that the homogenizer is, I just showed you how it works, 
but to homogenize her same ultrasonic vibrations can be used to homogenize the milk where the the fat globules in the milk can be equally uniformly distributed and that homogenized milk is what you're getting now there are also other ultrasonic homogenizer is one way there are also other ways of homogenizing right but one way is uh, by using ultrasonic uh, vibrations any questions till now any questions okay now ultrasonic vibrations are used in dishwashers right uh, i don't know whether i have an example for that let me just see this once again Let me just uh, just get this thing. This thing. Oh, just a moment. Oops. Okay, fine. Just sorry for that. I took a little while to get all this access. Okay, fine. So uh, the other thing where the ultrasound vibration is used is in dishwashers, right? Uh, where the vibrations. So what happens is when these ultrasonic vibrations are sent, it actually will the the detergent particles, the soap particles, will also vibrate, right? And it starts rubbing onto the plates. And removing uh, all the dirty particles which is sticking onto the utensils, right? So the ultrasonic vibrations will be like it is. It, it is as if we have a hand and we have a scrubber and we kind of do this. It, that similar action will be done by the ultrasonic vibrations. So the ultrasonic vibrations will vibrate those uh, soap particles, and the soap particles will rub against the plate, and the plates and all. Will start getting cleaned up. So ultrasonic vibrations get used in dishwashers, right? Ultrasonic vibrations can be used for driving rats and cockroaches because some of these will be, uh, for for example, some of the uh, ultrasonic wave vibrations, it is audible to rats and they will get scared hearing that, right? Same thing with cockroaches. So they get scared when they hear or it get it terribly irritates them when they hear those ultrasonic sounds so there are these they can hear it but they get irritated or they get uh, uh, scared when they hear it yes yes so there are equipments which are available we plug that it keeps producing the ultrasonic waves and uh, we cannot hear correct but it will drive away the cockroaches and rats, right? To an extent, to an extent. Uh, the other very, very common and very important use which ultrasonic waves are used for, ultrasonic vibrations are used for, is for ultrasound scans, right? I don't know if you've heard about ultrasound scans. So I'll show you um, what is uh, ultrasound scan, right? See, this is an ultrasound scan, and it is typically used to see how the baby fetus, fetus is basically the growing baby within the mother, how it is doing, is it healthy, everything is okay to find that. And every uh, three months, 
right? The doctor checks what is the status of the growing fetus. Ultrasound, ultrasound vibrations. So we'll I will explain how it really works, right? And you can see that here the doctor can see an image of the fetus, right? And uh, see whether the fetus is doing fine and all that. See, this is an image. Yeah, sure, sure. So this basically shows how a ultrasound uh, image looks like, which is produced by the ultrasound scanning machine, right? And what you see here is a fetus. So it's a growing baby. Yeah, which is a growing baby. So this is a fetus. There's nothing but growing baby within mother huh hey it is not this is the doctor will know how to interpret this right it's not a perfect image but this is enough right uh, for for the doctor to figure out whether everything is fine whether the brain is growing properly whether the heart is beating properly you can even see the heart beating and all that stuff right so and how many times is beating all that stuff we will be able to know right so so now how does this work <coughs> the way it works is as follows right see what happens is that uh, now did you see here what the doctor is doing see he is keeping something above the stomach you see this he is something he is holding something and he is keeping it it is not a stethoscope it, this is what is called a transduce. Uh, this is basically what you call the probe, right? I think it's they called. Also it. ultrasound. Yes. Sorry. Correct. So uh, actually, this 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 equipment is producing the sound waves it and it also is uh, can it can also detect its echo so echo yeah so the same concept so what basically happens is that the sound waves produced it goes inside right now it goes and hits on to the baby and it reflects back now the amount of reflection depends upon where the sound wave went and hit there are some places for example if it is liquid very little uh, i mean it, most of the sound wave will go through it nothing will reflect but if there is a solid thing like a baby there very faster yeah that is correct that's correct but what i'm saying is i'm talking about a reflection right so the sound most of the sound will so if you if you look at uh, the mother's womb womb is inside the womb is the where the baby is right so what happens is that now this is a womb assume right and there's baby inside right so the sound wave is coming most of the sound waves and around the, around the baby there's a lot of liquid a lot of fluid is there right inside the fluid is where the baby is right so the wave goes like that like that like that hits the baby and it goes back device. yeah so now the device is here right device is here so a device produced the wave the wave went it hit the baby it went came back so it is yeah so same concept so now this this detects that reflected wave see how much of the, the wave which was transmitted has got reflected back based on that it knows what is the material on which it has got hit because some materials absorb so, uh, some material will absorb most of the waves and some material will absorb only little of the wave based on that it knows what kind of material it went and hit was it a bone was it a uh, flesh right because based on that it, there's difference is it high density low density all that it can detect right and also it can locate because based on the amount of time it took 
for the reflection to come back. It can locate where that point which reflected the thing. Same as echolocation, right? So it can locate, it can also figure out what kind of material reflected and all that stuff. So it's a very pretty complex device. I am just explaining it in simple terms, but it's a pretty complex device. And it's got a pretty complex computer inside which can read all this and figure out things and all that, right? So I'm just giving very simple explanation. But ultimately, it is using the same concept of ultrasound waves going and reflect and detecting the reflection of the ultrasound waves and using which you are able to figure out the shape of the object, right? What that object made of and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so again, the same ultrasound waves and that is what's called ultrasound scan, which is used by doctors. Um, you know, it's not only for the babe, uh, baby, for, you can do ultrasound scans of your knee, of your joints, various purposes you can use ultrasound, uh, you can do ultrasound scan of your stomach, right, of your kidneys and all that and figure out whether everything is fine. So it is used for various purposes. It's a very, very important invention which is used in by doctors for figuring out the internal parts of your body and see how whether it's intact and, and, and stuff like that. For example, I go through annual checkup and in that I get I have my ultrasound scan of my uh, abdominal area where they look at whether my kidneys, kidneys are okay, my stomach is fine, intestines are okay and all that stuff, right? So using ultrasound machine. So, ultrasound vibrations can be used for relieving pain in joints and muscles. Because what? Ultrasound waves, when it is sent inside, <coughs> it is like massaging, right? That vibration goes inside and it, it kind of shakes different areas. And it's like massaging and when, it, when that massaging happens, what happens? The blood circulation in that area increases. So, for example, if you have an inflamed joint, when the, this ultrasonic vibrations can increase the blood circulation there and that will lead to removal of that uh, inflammation uh, the the what you call the, the the removal of the inflammation from the joint and reduction of the pain for example when when I went through a knee injury I was actually asked to go through a ultrasound uh, treatment and what they do is they'll put ultrasound probes all over my knee it will actually send the ultrasound waves and uh, you know and I can feel a slight heat which will be formed in the knee because of the vibration and slowly that will allow the inflammation to subside right so again another reason of how the ultrasound uh, vibrations are used okay I think uh, so you have seen uh, the homogenization the ultrasound scanning machine how the ultrasound uh, is used by bass by dolphins right uh, various uh, uh, you know areas of use one more thing which I want to talk about is ultrasound testing right in engineering I am I'm basically uh, I am an engineer and uh, you know when you when you have welding of joints so if you have two different metal sheets you want to join together you can use what you call welding to join once the welding is done you can actually use ultrasound to see whether the welding is proper are there cracks inside the weld right now um, I think we'll just stop now right we'll continue the discussion about this in the next session I will explain how the ultrasound vibrations are used to see whether there are any flaws in uh, in your in a metal for example are there any uh, cracks inside a metal are there any cracks in a weld and so on we'll discuss that later right uh, once again I want to tell you that this presentation is coming from this uh, video is coming from Naviuk study which is a Naviuk study channel it's a YouTube channel uh, for providing free videos for CBSE and ICSE school students to learn physics chemistry um, and also mathematics uh, if you want to get in touch with us send a mail to naviuk.study at gmail.com if you want to uh, go to a website go to http colon slash slash naviukstudy.wordpress.com have a great day see you again with the next session of sound coming soon. Till then, great. Have a nice time studying and have fun in life. Bye-bye.